over the past week or two have had a lot of questions about lodging so I want to spend just a few minutes here with you today talking about what lodging is why it's caused and what we can do to reduce it hopefully eliminate it altogether so obviously to start out what lodging is here behind me you can see an area of the field that's obviously lodged it's flat on the ground okay this is an end row where the liquid nitrogen was doubled up uh, during one of the applications this spring so we've got too much nitrogen and the wheat has basically fallen over and it's really that simple the wheat falls over obviously what you've got is a, a wheat head suspended on a wheat stem that's approximately 30 inches 38 inches tall so when it starts getting combined with rainfall that gets the head wet the leaves wet in combination with wind especially strong winds then before you know it the whole plant gets too top heavy to stand up and the field falls over okay so that's basically what lodging is there's actually two types of lodging the first one is what we're seeing here which is what we call stem lodging okay when you look at the base of the plant the base of the plant is actually kinked allowing the plant to fall over okay so that's basically stem lodging this base of the plant got damaged and the plant falls over the other type of lodging is sometimes what we see in North Dakota in the Red River Valley under conventional tillage we also see it quite a bit in California and Arizona again under conventional tillage when the soil is super saturated in a tilled system and you don't have a super amount of root growth or root structure in, again in saturated soils and in combination with strong winds it actually blows the plants over or it can blow the plants over and that will be similar as what you see sometimes when a whole tree rolls over under strong winds perhaps and you start seeing the whole roots pivoting out of the ground so the whole tree lays over horizontally and the roots roll over that's basically uh, what you're seeing in some of these wheat fields when you see root lodging so two types of lodging okay this wheat is actually starting to stand back up so depending on when it lodges that will obviously dictate how much the wheat will stand back up and that obviously helps with harvest if you've got to feel totally what I call road rolled flat on the ground it's really a challenge to harvest especially if it's laying in all directions now if it's just laying all the same direction oftentimes farmers can cut across you know one way and then the other across the down wheat or lodged wheat and it makes harvest a lot easier but making harvest a little easier still is what you see in here when the plants start to stretch back up and that does make harvest a little easier and obviously what we what's going on here this is phototropism as, as most people are aware the cells on the shaded side of the plant basically uh, expand as a result of the auxins a chemical within the plant and then that allows the nodes to stand the plant plant straight back up assuming there's enough time to do so okay a lot of guys ask how much yield loss is associated with lodging and that's pretty difficult to answer there's a lot of factors involved but I'm going to suggest uh, based upon a lot of research that's out there you lose about 1% of your yield for every day that the plant is lodged between the day it lodges and between the day the plant starts to dry down okay 1% per day between it lodging and the plant starting to dry down so that can be two or three percent if it's down just a few days uh, before it starts to dry down if it lodges early for example during early grain fill then you can see a very significant yield loss okay and it's somewhat region and variety sensitive also so those are some things uh, the other challenges with lodging uh, unless you've got a very robust fungicide package lodged wheat because it's close to the ground it's got an ideal microclimate for disease generally lodged wheat you see a lot more foliar disease in a lodged canopy compared to the canopy alongside it that's standing up we often see examples like that where there's a lot of disease even on a flag leaf in lodged wheat compared to standing wheat alongside that's that's still clean so a, a sound fungicide package is obviously important even in lodged wheat the other challenge with lodged wheat is obviously harvesting obviously it's a lot slower to harvest lodged wheat and generally it's very difficult to feed lodged wheat into a combine it generally doesn't feed very well it tends to hang on the header even a draper header then it's going into the combine in clumps 
and it's very difficult to separate grain out of those clumps, especially damp clumps. That's one of the big benefits of a grain stripper or stripper head as we call it. Call it. it basically combs through the straw, kind of standing some of the straw up, but it basically takes grain and chaff into the machine and a few leaves without running a lot of that damp straw through the combine. So in down wheat a stripper header works very well and you'll see a lot more capacity with a combine in down wheat using a stripper header compared to a draper or a regular flex head, okay? Uh, the other thing to discuss or certainly in, in, in need of mention is two other factors that are important, maybe more than two. But the first one, I'm standing here in a variety trial. I've got 18 different varieties and this is a replicated study and what we're able to do is look at within the same management, the same amount of nitrogen, we've adjusted the seed rate so we planted this trial by the number of seeds per square yard, obviously not pounds, we don't want to do that, we, we want to make it equal on all of them. So this is basically a strip trial, a replicated one that allows us to look at and compare different varieties within the same management system. So it quickly tells us which varieties stand up, which ones don't. In most examples, the taller varieties have challenges standing up. So we try to find wheat varieties that are shorter. That isn't always the case because sometimes shorter varieties don't have a lot of stem strength. But generally speaking, we try and find varieties that are shorter. And that's a little difficult because certain growing seasons especially ones like, like this one where there was a lot of residual nitrogen carried over from the previous year, we've got taller wheat this year. And as a result of the early nitrogen also, we do have some stem quality issues, meaning the stem isn't nearly as rigid as it perhaps could be in a normal growing season. So try and find varieties that are short, that also have good stem quality or good stiff stems to try and help those plants stand up. Lastly, nitrogen management is huge, okay? In most examples across the US, we shoot for about 500 to 600 heads per square yard, okay? In most of this field, we got five to 600 head counts approximately, but you start looking at wheat here on the ends where it's flat. This is where nitrogen was doubled up early in the season. We did apply nitrogen twice, and obviously where the nitrogen was doubled up, and in some examples where the seed was doubled up at seeding time, we got a, an excessive canopy, and as a result of that excessive canopy, both too many seeds and too much nitrogen, then we have lodging. So avoiding overlap with the drill or air seeder, avoiding overlap with the nitrogen is very important. Okay, so that's a little information on lodging. Hopefully you can use these tips and suggestions to help keep your fields standing up in the future. Thanks for watching.